so hi folks and um, lovely day again here today um, we're going to have some salon tea this afternoon and I've just spoiled the kettle brought it straight from the kitchen so the water is just coming down from the boil and in our teapot here we're going to put two heap spoons of the tea this is a large leaf salon tea and this will brew with quite a light taste for black tea compared to others perfect for a lovely afternoon like this and we're just going to leave that to infuse for a couple of minutes so this tea as i mentioned is from salon and teas come from all over the world but uh, mainly from Asia, Africa, the African belt, Kenya, Rwanda, uh, countries around the equator. Uh, China is the biggest producer of tea um, in the world but they're mainly focused on green teas um, rather than others and uh, this tea from Ceylon or Sri Lanka as now uh, comes from an estate called uh, Dimbula Nduela and it's a tea that's uh, referred to as orange pico um, and often people come into the shop and they say oh orange pico does it taste of orange if they've not come across it before a little bit unsure but the orange is nothing to do with the taste at all that's uh, a traditional quality mark for the tea and that actually comes from uh, the early days of tea being brought into Europe and the Dutch Royal family, the House of Orange, um, have been um, associated with importing tea uh, for many, many years and the orange part of the orange pico comes from, from their name actually and not from the taste of oranges at all. But obviously they were importing large leaf tea um, or fine quality teas I should say. Um, through uh, to Europe from Asia and uh, China and India. Um, the pico part of orange pico refers to the leaf that's used, the tea leaf. Um, so orange pico is simply a, a, an indication that you've got a good quality tea, um, but the tea can vary from one orange pico to another in terms of its strength and its character. Um, but they are all uh, of a good standard, so it's a good, uh, reliable indication that you're buying tea that should be uh, very pleasant and very enjoyable. Now in this case, I'm uh, brewing this tea to have black, so I won't be adding any milk. And I'll be brewing this on the lighter side, so around about uh, three or four minutes. Um, this isn't really a tea that takes milk that well. Um, other salon teas will, um, but you may have noticed this was a particularly large leaf tea and large leaf teas brew a little bit lighter um, because they have less surface area in the water so the tea um, doesn't develop the strength that uh, finer cut teas might have. But you can find salon teas that will be smaller leaf if you want a stronger type. Um, now this one don't be put off by the colour. You'll see when I pour it's going to be quite light. That's part of the beauty of the tea. One thing I've missed out on showing you when we've had tea previously in other videos is the next stage. Um, I'd like to have a second cup of the tea and not have it too strong. So in these new style teapots they come with an internal infuser and that means that once you're happy with the strength of your brew you can lift out the infuser take it and take the tea which is inside there take it out of the water which means that that pot of tea will sit there quite happily now and we can enjoy that when we're ready but it won't have over brewed and stewed um, with the tea in the pot so uh, I hope you're 
enjoying your afternoon and you found the tea uh, found the moment to sit and have some tea yourselves um, and if you can get out in the sunshine then why not enjoy it a little bit of bird song in the background for me as well today so i'm going to enjoy my drink and say so long for now and we'll see you next time